Okay, enough of that, enough of that, stop this. $15,000 per month for a trading internship with zero experience in finance. Yes, this is possible and I did it. First, I'm going to tell you my crazy story, then I'm going to give you three pieces of advice for getting there too. My friend told me about this hedge fund called The Isha and Company, and he said if I apply there and if they like my CV, they would invite me for an interview and pay for a stay in a luxury hotel in London. This sounded really exciting, so I decided to submit my CV. If you want to become Wolf of Wall Street for a summer, or if you're just looking for a free three-day vacation, this video is for you. Back to my application. There are two options for the internship placement. You could become a trader or a quantitative analysis. I didn't really know what the difference was, but trader was first in the drop-down menu, so I went with that one. A few weeks later, an interview invitation arrived in my inbox stating they would be flown to London for a series of five interviews. So I went. They let me stay in the most beautiful luxury hotel in the city, the Landmark. I'd seen this hotel in movies before. As nice as the hotel was, I felt a bit uncomfortable and out of place as this world of luxury and wealth was just something I'd never seen before. My English at the time was really bad and I felt rather uncomfortable talking to the waiter in between all of the seven courses of my dinner at a very high-end restaurant. The next day, I had five consecutive interviews. To get myself a bit hyped up, I decided to watch The Wolf of Wall Street. I didn't really know what to wear, but the guys in the movies all had these nice custom tailored suits, so I decided to get my old wrinkly suit out of my suitcase and put it on. So there I was, sitting in this fancy meeting room with high-tech everything, realizing that my vacation had come to an end. And also I was studying at a very unknown university in Croatia, so I didn't really have high hopes for anything. The interviewer from DE Shaw walked in and he asked me the following. Sell me this pen. Just kidding. The first question he actually asked me was about put and call options, terms which I had never heard before. But he was very kind to so explain to me exactly what they were, and since I knew a lot of Brownian motion and statistical physics, I was quickly able to figure them out. During these consecutive interviews, I began to feel a little bit more comfortable. The questions started being more open-ended, such as how would you create a model to accurately predict the results of Champions League games? The idea was to hear my thought process out loud. Instead of just using final scores, I decided to go a lot deeper. I used the combinations of scores, attempted goals, and player rankings to create a self-improving algorithm that could learn and make the most accurate predictions possible. Other questions were purely mathematical, such as how many zeros does the number 100 factorial have? If you know the answer, comment down below. Feel free to pause the video. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video about DSHA coming out soon. Anyways, I wasn't really stressed given the fact that I never really wanted to work for a hedge fund in the first place. Also, I already had an internship lined up in Switzerland at the EPFL, which I was super excited about. But a few days later, I received a call from them and they said that they wanted to have me on their team. I was about to tell them that I'm not interested, but before I could say anything, the manager told me how much money I would be making. $15,000 per month. I almost dropped the phone. This was as much money as the average Croatian person would make in 15 months. In my head, I was freaking out. This would allow me to leave Croatia and study at my dream university. Externally though, I played it cool. I just said, Sorry, uh, I, I appreciate the call. I really have to give this some thought and uh, talk to my wife about it. Um, can I call you back? I quickly called a professor in Switzerland who I had agreed to work with over the summer and said, Hey, listen, do you mind if we do that internship another time? So I reached out to D. Shaw and said that I'm accepting the offer. But they told me before I can actually sign the contract, I had to undergo a background check. And that thing was completely crazy. They wanted to talk to everybody. They wanted to talk to my family, my friends, my high school teachers, my elementary school teachers, and even the people in the orphanage where I volunteered in Kenya the year before. But after this was completed, I finally signed the contract and was ready to get started. Fast forward a few months, I just arrived in London and was ready to start my first day as a trader. Here's how it went. One, two, three. Just kidding. It wasn't at all like this. People were very relaxed and I even felt silly wearing a blazer as everything was very informal. There was definitely no trace of cocaine and hookers, my friend. One thing that did hold true was the energy on the trading floor especially in the New York office. People were running around shouting, cursing on the phone, and there was news blasting out of the TVs in all the corners. I started off doing typical intern stuff. At some point, they asked me to help them with a simulation. 
I discovered that in one of their models they were using a miscalculation to simulate the stock market which is distributed with a log normal distribution. This probably saved them about a million dollars. They were so impressed with my work that they decided to give me very advanced tasks, which felt kind of strange at the time because, let's be honest, I had no clue what I was doing. Also, nobody knows if a stock is going to go up, down, sideways, or in fucking circles, least of all stockbrokers. The first major task that they gave to me was to work out a deal with a very famous bank that I cannot name. I had to simulate a complex derivative that was in the upper two digit million dollars. I knew how to create simulations from physics, but ultimately I was off by a solid $900,000 because of some mistake and I thought that my boss would freak out. Luckily I noticed it in the very last moment. To my big surprise, he was super chill about it. Later that summer, I also made a miscalculation by around $50,000 and he just said, ah, $50,000, whatever. Also, as D. Shaw's headquarters were in New York City, they would often send me little business trips there. In classic D. Shaw style, they would spend like $7,000 on my five day trip. You know, I'm talking business class flight, limo to and from the airport, beautiful hotel with Times Square's view. The internship ended, and all in all, it was a really interesting and fascinating phase of my life. I learned so much about finance, but ultimately I wanted to continue and go back to academia. So I donated a large chunk of the money that I earned and put the rest towards my savings for Switzerland and EPFL. Here are three key pieces of advice if you want to work for a place such as D.E. Shaw. The single most important thing is that you have a good intuition and understanding of mathematics. Try practicing probability problems as much as possible. Once you know math and have good intuition for it, they can teach you everything else. The language of mathematics is the same no matter where you go, no matter what language you speak, no matter whether you do physics, finance or anything else. Develop a good mathematical intuition and the world will be open to you. Secondly, know what a log normal distribution is. I learned about a log normal distribution while doing an internship in climate science and it turns out 90% of finance is modeled with a log normal distribution. Thirdly, learn some basic Python programming. 95% of all simulations on the trading floor can be done with basic for loops and if statements. If you have more questions about D. Shaw, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'm going to address them. Also, as of filming, they have 14 open internship positions on their website and they're updating them quite frequently. Let me leave you with some thoughts about money. See, money doesn't just buy you a better life, better food, better cars, better pussy. It also makes you a better person. You can give generously to the church or political party of your choice. You can save the fucking spotted owl with money. Now obviously Jordan Belfort was a very bad person and you should never inspire to become as greedy and dishonest as he was. But he does have a point here. Money certainly doesn't buy happiness. But if you're a good person and you don't allow money to corrupt you, it can in some way enable you to do good at a larger scale. And making the world a better place can, in turn, make you happier. Much like my experience at D-Shaw, I would have never imagined becoming a YouTuber. Honestly, the past few weeks have been truly incredible. I connected with many of you on Instagram and had a lot of interesting conversations and I love hearing from you guys. So please give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you next time.